So yeah, I'm going to go over this story one time here on the podcast. And then I'm going to address a couple of issues afterwards that I feel like um, need to be addressed as well. And then we can move on to the great show of Gannon Burr and Ricky Wysocki and talking about Holland and the great tournaments. This is what happened. Okay. What, what is it? Uh, Norway play a great tournament. Take seventh place. Decide we're going to go out and celebrate people who know me on tour know that I do not do this. I'm strictly business after every single round. I'm typically doing commentary, and when I'm not, I'm sitting at home chilling. I decide, hey, you know what? Norway just had a great tournament. Sure, let me go out with the fellas. We do this. Have a great time. Fantastic. We shut this place down in the middle of Nor- in Oslo, the city, okay? Shut the place down. We're all outside. I'm talking to a couple, two people, okay? Conversation's going great. Nothing's really happening. Random guy comes up to me, accuses me of doing something that I did not do. I tell the guy, no, I didn't do that. He insists. I tell him again, no, I did not do that. He then puts his hands on me and gives me a little shove. I tell the guy, don't touch me. Basically, get away from me. In in the kindest words that I can say on here. He then gives me a full shove. I give him a full shove back. That's it. That's what happens, okay? He backs down. He goes, whoa, that's, it's not like that, blah, 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 blah. End of the story, right? No, not end of the story. Some other random guy comes behind this guy. And in so many words says, I want to fight you. I chirp back at this guy because I'm fired up at this point. I just got shoved, shoved the dude back. Other guy comes in, wants a piece. I chirp back at this guy. He attacks me, Okay. This all happens in 45 seconds, probably. The whole story, 45 seconds. I don't know if you guys have ever been in a, in a fight or ever been jumped, but it happens pretty damn quick. Things don't go this guy's way quickly, okay? We'll just say that. People kind of break it up. All of a sudden, I'm in a group of people who are not only trying to break it up, but also throwing blows my way. Okay, I'm getting pulled, I'm getting punched, and I'm getting kicked. I get slammed. I get back up, and as I'm getting back up, I get clipped in the face by somebody who kicks me. Okay, I get back up. Original guy's straight in front of me. I go forward. Another guy picks me up and then pile drives me. That's where I get the injury from my shoulder. I get back up. Somebody then gets me and pulls me out of there. And I get to safety. That's what happened. Okay. And when I say I'm getting clipped, I was getting clipped from the side. I'm getting clipped from this side. And I got kicked in the face and slammed two times in a matter of, let's say, 15 seconds, probably less than that. It happens all fast. So the rumor train of all this stuff about me attacking a security guard never happened. One of the guys who slammed me was a security guard who came up from behind me in a group of people who were attacking me and picked me up and slammed me. I later found out that he was probably friends with this original guy. Okay. I know this because I came back. I came back because I lost my wedding ring, which was on my necklace. I got stung by a wasp or a hornet or something the day before we were playing this little course. My hand swelled up, put it on my necklace. It got ripped off. A few of us came back to look for my wedding ring. Three of the guys who attacked me were still there. I know Mm. this because I remember seeing one of them and the other guy had my hat on. And when he saw me, he quickly threw my hat over in the bushes. I saw him. I didn't address it because I was just looking for my wedding ring and I didn't want to get in another fight. And so I go up to these guys and I'm like, Hey, bygones be bygones. I lost my wedding ring. Will you guys help me find it? They were like, yeah, absolutely. Squashed. Now, People are saying, okay, so this is typically something that you would like uh, get a lawsuit, policemen, all this different stuff. Here's my thought process through the whole thing. I didn't feel like I got that hurt. I felt like I got pretty lucky. I got slammed. My shoulder hurt a little bit, but it wasn't anything too crazy. I got clipped by the kick. That wasn't too crazy. And I felt like I was absolutely fine. Fine enough to even go back and look for my wedding ring. We leave there the next day we wake up and I'm like, Ooh, shoulder feels a little, a little bad, but it should be good. I thought that my shoulder was hurt because I was throwing a punch. 
that's why I'm like, Ooh, I probably haven't done that in a long time. I probably pulled something in my shoulder. This is going to heal pretty quickly. Right. Another day goes by. I go to a physical therapist in, um, at the European open. He tells me, yeah, it's pretty bad, but we'll do these things. You might be good to go by the European open. So I rest ice, rest, ice, rest, ice. Can't do it. Don't play the European open. Obviously come back home. Text Brody, hey, I should probably um, let people know what's going on the next episode. We start the episode, never comes up. I don't think anything of it, right? In that episode, I make my light dim. Now, this is what's hilarious to me, okay? Typically, when you have a black eye, you know what you do? You wear sunglasses out in public. That's a typical thing you don't just go out like a ufc fighter like hey look at me look at my big black eye let's talk about this every single second wear the sunglasses for the president's cup come here still have a black eye don't want to go on my podcast with a black eye so i dim the lights this is a normal thing people do if you're on tv you think these people go on there with a black eye and do their show no they usually put makeup on or something I wasn't going to address this situation until I knew exactly what was wrong with my shoulder because I didn't know if I was going to be playing the European Open, and then I didn't know if I was going to be playing the Ledgestone Open. I thought I honestly thought I was going to be completely fine. I set up a doctor's appointment the day that I got back home. They expedited an MRI. I got that done. I found out the day all this crap blew up and, and somebody de-resolutionized of photo of me doing my podcast and then posting all this nonsense. Now there are a billion different versions of this story and I don't really care. I get that comes with the territory. I'm going to get people talking about this, talking about that, talking about whatever. Last thing I'm, well, I got two more things to say. One, my fault. I'm not the person who's going to blame anything or do whatever. I'm the person at fault for my success, me and God, and I'm the person for my, when bad things happen, my fault. Okay. My fault. Other thing I want to address, Norway is my favorite place to go. It is awesome. The people are incredible. Okay. The disc golf is incredible. The disc golf community is incredible. So when I see all this kind of hate comments towards this place on my behalf. I appreciate the support, but let's take it somewhere else. Not there. Okay. Another thing, this is for the other podcasts out there that want to get in on my business. Okay. I like it. You have a right to do this. I want you to make stories and I want you to be successful. I want you to have a a successful podcast or show or whatever you do. But In the disc golf community, it's pretty tight knit. You have direct access to me. And I've messaged several of these people personally and said, Hey, next time, next time you want to break a story and talk about this, all this stuff, you can talk to me. I'm one message away. You can get the actual facts. No problem. I also commented on one of the comment sections of one of these one of these things on YouTube. I won't say who it is because I don't really, it doesn't matter. They deleted my comments, basically saying the same thing. I got no hate towards them, nothing. I'm going to watch their show next week. It's going to be awesome. I'm sure. But if you want to have a legitimate source, go to the person. That's me. You can go to these other people and hear all these side stories or whatever, and that's fine. You can do that. I have no problem with that. But it might help if you add the actual person, and it's not that hard to find me. It really isn't. Next thing. And I'm going to say this louder for the people in the back, okay? I'm not the person who's going to not defend my name. It's never going to happen. That's not who I am. I'm going to stand up for myself every single time so we can just wash that. Okay. Moving forward. I'm probably not going to be partying at all lately. It's probably, I'm probably going to take a nice break. The last time that I went out and partied, and this is true on tour was the European open black party the year before. So all this stuff about Paul being a lush and going out and doing all this thing. Nope. I'm strictly about my business. 
that's what I'm about. I'm about making good content for you guys, practicing my butt off, making good Jomez footage for you guys, speaking my mind. That's the last thing I'm going to say about this. I appreciate all the support and all the love that flowed through too, because even though there was a lot of negative con comments, there was more positivity coming my way, which I appreciate. An update on my injury, I should be back in about two to three months. I'm hoping I can make a return for the USDGC. The fracture that I received was right where the um, rotator cuffs meets my other bone. And so my rotator my rotator tendons pull on where the fracture is. So it's a little bit worse than just having a fracture, but it's a lot better than having a torn rotator cuff, which is what I thought it was in the, in the first place. Now there are details about this thing that aren't probably going to get released. There probably are, but that's my business and that's nobody else's business. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. And I think to answer some of the questions that were, you know, flying around being like, Hey, tour life, you guys, is, you're, you're the podcast. That's not afraid to talk about any topic. You're not afraid to call things out. You know, why aren't you talking about this? Obviously that was like the biggest, I guess you could say like story that was being thrown around during that week. It's because if you guys have been here and if you guys are listeners of this podcast, you know, we don't go into personal stuff. We don't talk about people's families. We don't talk about people's, uh, you know, drinking habits. We don't talk about people's drug usage. We don't talk about people's relationships. We don't talk about any of that stuff. If it's off the course and it's something personal to do with that person, if they want to bring it up, if they want to come on the podcast and they want to talk about it or they want to bring it up, that's one thing. But we don't talk about it. So when Yuli, and, and you can ask Yuli, I never once asked him any no. questions. He reached out. He told me the story. I never once reached, responded back being like, we need more details or you need to talk about this on the podcast. Like that's just not what we do here. Um, and if you want that information, there's other podcasts out there that will talk about that stuff. We just will never do that here. We just will never do it. Never do it. So uh, if that's what you're looking for, sorry, we're not going to bring it to you here. Um, we're just going to talk about strictly the disc golf stuff that's happening in disc golf and uh, leave all the other stuff at the door.